What's up guys, Sagi here and welcome to another Tech Gear Talk. Today we're gonna to compare two outstanding entry-level mirrorless cameras, the Canon M50 and the Sony A6100. I got the M50 as soon as it came out and I've been using it ever since. And if you're not new to my channel, you know that I have a ton of M50 related videos. It's one of my favorite cameras and one that I recommend all the time as an entry-level mirrorless camera. It's small, it's portable, it's easy to use, it has dual pixel autofocus, shoots in 4K, has a fully articulating touchscreen, and it does in-body time-lapse. Then last year, Sony came out with the A6100 as the little brother to the A64 and A6600. And while it doesn't have all of the features of the two more advanced models, it does offer fantastic image quality and ISO performance, beautifully sharp 4K, 120 frames per second for slow motion, incredible autofocus, and a clean HDMI output. So today I'm gonna to talk about the strengths and weaknesses of both cameras when it comes to photography and video, and hopefully I can help you decide which option is best for you. My goal with every camera comparison is to give you a detailed overview of the cameras and compare them in a way that relates to real life use. I will go over some of the important specs of these two cameras, but I'm going to focus on sharing my actual user experience with you. Now before getting into the detailed comparison, I want to quickly go over some overall key features in case you're just starting your research. And you can feel free to skip around if there's a particular section that you're interested in by using the timestamps that are in the description. The M50 has a 24.1 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor. It uses Canon's dual pixel autofocus system, which is awesome. It has a brand new Digic 8 processor, which improves speed and performance as well as image quality. It has a three inch fully articulating touchscreen LCD, and it can shoot up to 4K at 24 frames per second. It's got combination image stabilization that uses five axis digital image stabilization with lens-based IS. There's also a nice OLED electronic viewfinder, and it has Wi-Fi with NFC and Bluetooth, so you can easily move your images to a mobile device. Finally, you have full control over the camera for both photography and video using the Canon Camera Connect app. The A6100 has a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor and it uses the Bions X image processor, which again helps with operating speed, performance, and the great image quality. It uses a hybrid autofocus system with 425 phase and contrast detection points with real-time autofocus for stills and impressive subject tracking. It has a three inch 921,000 dot flip LCD screen and it can internally record 4K up to 30 frames per second 420 or externally at 422. There's also an entry level 1.44 million dot OLED electronic viewfinder. It can shoot continuously at up to 11 frames per second and has an expandable ISO of up to 51,200. Finally, we have a built-in flash and an external mic input for better audio. Okay, so let's get to the comparison. And I wanna mention that the M50 currently sells for $479 and the A6100 sells for $598. So there's about a $120 difference, and we'll see if that comes into play at the end. I wanna start out by talking about the sensor and the processor. And both the A6100 and the M50 come with a 24 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor. Now the Sony APS-C sensor has a crop factor of 1.5X, and the Canon APS-C sensor has a crop factor of 1.6X. So we're gonna get a slightly wider angle of view with the Sony sensor, but it's not really enough to make it a deciding factor for me. To put things in perspective, if you put a 50 millimeter on the A6100 and apply 1.5X crop, it will give you a full frame equivalent field of view of 75 millimeters. On the other hand, if you put that same lens on the M50, apply 1.6 X crop, you're getting an 80 millimeter equivalent field of view. So again, not a huge difference. This may become more of an issue when we're looking at the wider angle, like something like the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4, which is available for both Sony E-mount and the Canon EFM mount, so I've got it here on both cameras. On the Sony, we're getting a 24 millimeter full frame equivalent, and on the Canon, it's a 25.6. When we're looking at wide angle lenses, it's always nicer to have more width, so I'm gonna give the slight advantage to Sony here. Now, both cameras have an ISO range of 100 to 51,200. 
But in terms of ISO performance, or what many people call low light performance, I'm gonna give the edge again to the A6100 because I'm able to shoot at higher ISO values and get a cleaner image. So as far as the sensor goes, I'm gonna give the edge to the Sony because of the improved ISO performance, a slightly lower crop factor. Now this is only telling part of the story and we're gonna to get to the full story in the image quality section. As far as processors, the A6100 uses the Bions X processor and the M50 uses the Digic 8 processor. We're seeing manufacturers using the same processors on these entry level cameras as they do on some of the higher end models. And the combination of sensor and processor on both of these cameras produced very nice images and video for me. In addition, general menu operation is fast for both cameras. Both have very quick startup and things like image preview and video playback are nice and fast. Now because of how I shoot, one of the features that I look at for every camera that I get is continuous or burst shooting. And this lets you just point the camera at a subject and hold down the shutter and the camera will just keep firing. And this is a nice feature to have if you're photographing sports, pets, kids running around or any fast moving subject. Now, of course, the more frames you have per second, the more exposures you'll have to pick from later on. So the A6100 can shoot at up to 11 frames per second in burst and the M50 can shoot at up to 10 frames per second. So not a huge difference there. Now, when we look at buffer memory, we'll see that Sony reports 77 JPEGs and 33 raw images for the A6100 versus 36 JPEGs and 10 raw images for the M50. So while both cameras give us similar frames per second capabilities at 11 versus 10, the Sony can shoot almost twice as many continuous images when shooting JPEGs more than three times as many when shooting raw. Now, it's important to me that when we look at features or functions, you take a moment to consider how you actually plan to use the camera. And when we see advantages in one direction or another, that you take into account whether it will actually matter to you. In this case, when we look at 77 JPEGs versus 36, it seems like that's a big advantage to Sony. But do you actually shoot 36 continuous frames? and will this actually matter to you? So look, there's no right answer here. It has to do with what and how you shoot. So maybe you don't shoot 77 continuous shots, but you like to shoot sports or birds in flight. So you may shoot 10 or 15 picture bursts and then another one, and you're gonna take a second and then shoot another one and another one. And the buffer space means that you can continue to shoot that without interruptions. My only goal is to help you pick the camera that will work best for you. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. To sum things up, as far as sensor and processor, I'm gonna give the edge to the A6100 because it has better ISO performance, slightly faster burst shooting, and a larger buffer. Before I move on to the next section, if you like what you've seen so far, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. It helps me know what kind of content you like so that I can make more of it. If you're in any groups or forums and you think this video will be helpful to other members, go ahead and drop a link. And if it's your first time here, hit the subscribe and notification buttons so you can stay up to date on all the latest gear and tutorials. All right, moving on, one of the most important things for me with any tool that I use is ergonomics in terms of both handling and user experience. As far as size goes, both cameras are small and portable, which makes them great options for travel, vlogging, and street photography. The A6100 is a little longer, but it's a lot shorter due to the EVF on the M50 protruding from the top. That makes it easier to get the Sony in smaller pockets and just provides a more compact solution. Now, even though it's smaller, the A6100 has a deeper grip which in my opinion makes it more comfortable to hold and use. And this becomes more of a factor as you start using larger and heavier lenses. Now build quality seems about the same for both. We're getting fairly plasticky bodies in both cases, which is expected from an entry level model and neither offers weather or dust resistance. As far as battery life, the A6100 uses the older NPFW50 batteries and it's rated for 420 shots. The M50 uses the LPE12 battery and it's rated for 235 shots. So here I'm giving the clear edge to the A6100, which has almost twice the battery life. One feature that I like about the A6100 is that it can be used while it's plugged in. So if you record long video sessions or for live streaming, you don't have to worry about the battery. Just plug it in using a micro USB cable and you're all set. The M50 has a similar feature, but you have to use a coupler. And if you're interested, I published a video that shows you how to do that and helps with the M50's poor battery life and I'll link to it up in the corner and down there in the description. Now, when it comes to chargers, the A6100 does not come with a battery charger. So you have to charge the battery in camera 
or you buy an external charger. And the M50 does come with a dedicated battery charger, so you can keep additional batteries charged, but you don't have the option of charging the battery in camera. So you have to pick what's better for you. Let's talk a little bit about the viewfinder. Because of the A6100's rangefinder style design, the viewfinder doesn't protrude from the body and it contributes to a more compact form factor. Both viewfinders are 0.39 inch in size, but the Sony has a 1.44 million dot resolution and the Canon has a 2.46 million dot resolution. It's sharper and in my opinion, it provides a better viewing experience. Now next I wanna discuss the buttons and dials on both of these cameras. And I think that if you're buying a camera and you're just using it the way it came with the factory settings, you're really missing out. A big part of what you get when you're buying a camera like this is the ability to customize it to work better for how you shoot. Now the A6100 uses the top dial and the control wheel on the back for aperture and shutter speed. And it has two custom buttons that you can program to get quick access to frequently used features. The M50 only has one top dial, so you have to use the top arrow on the directional pad to alternate between aperture and shutter speed. And there's only one custom button. Both cameras allow you to program each button in the directional pad, so you can really set them up to work well for how you shoot. I'm going to give the edge here to the A6100 because having dedicated aperture and shutter speed buttons provides a better shooting experience in my opinion. And it has a little more flexibility in terms of custom buttons. Now both cameras offer quick menu options on the A6100 it's called the functions menu and on the M50 it's called the quick menu. The M50 has a fixed quick menu, meaning that you can't change the features and functions that show up. On the other hand, the A6100 gives you 12 programmable spots that you can populate with your most used settings. I don't really feel like a lot of things are missing from the M50 quick menu, but I do like the flexibility of having control with the A6100 for quick access to features like audio levels, face detection, and animal eye autofocus, all of which I'll discuss later on in the video. Now, as far as ease of use, I'm gonna give the edge to the M50. I just find it a lot simpler to use. The main menu is much better organized. I love the fact that I can use the touch screen to make selections from the main menu change camera settings like aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, and make selections from the quick menu. So in my opinion, it might make a better option for beginners. Now this is a bit of a double-edged sword because the A6100 has more features and settings that by definition make it a more complex camera to use, but also more powerful. So you have to choose what's more important to you. Next, I wanna talk about resolution, frame rates, and image quality. So for photography, both cameras have a 6,000 by 4,000 pixel image. As far as strict head-to-head -head resolution, it's gonna be a tie. Both cameras can shoot in JPEG and RAW, so you can decide just how much information you wanna capture, depending on what you plan on doing with the images in post-production. I was really happy with the images I got from both cameras, and the photos were clean and crisp. As far as color and specifically skin tones, my personal preference is the M50. I find it much easier to get pleasing, accurate skin tones. Sony colors are improving with time, Again, specifically for skin tones, but it still has a little bit of that Sony look, which some people like and some people don't. I always mention that there's definitely some personal preference here, so I'm just sharing my impressions, and of course, any of this can be easily worked out in post. In terms of image quality, it's a split decision for me. I like the color rendering on the M50, but I like the ISO performance and the noise reduction on the A6100 when shooting in low light. Now, if you're interested in low light shooting or high ISO performance, I have a video that's dedicated to that. For me, it's not much of an issue because especially when you're using such fast lenses, you can get so much light in the camera. But if you're interested in learning more about that, again, I'll put a link up there and then in the description. Moving on to video, the A6100 can record 4K at 24 and 30 frames per second with full sensor readout. And then full HD or 1080p at 24, 30, 60, and 120 frames per second. Now the M50 can shoot 4K only at 24 frames per second and full HD or 1080p at 24, 30, and 60 frames per second. Now 4K on the M50 is also limited by an additional 1.7x crop factor, which makes it pretty challenging to get wide shots. And it's also hampered by the lack of dual pixel autofocus. I'll talk more about this in the autofocus section, but it's a very important distinction. So the A6100 has a significant advantage when shooting in 4K. There's no crop in 4K24 and just a 1.2x crop when shooting 4K30, which the M50 can't do at all. 
We also get 120 frames per second in full HD for great slow motion and the fact that 4K isn't impacted by inferior autofocus. The A6100 can also record up to 4K30 422 8-bit via a clean HDMI output at 100 megabits per second, which gives you the option of using an external recorder. Now, overall 4K footage from the A6100 is just better than the M50. The full sensor readout gives us sharper footage and the autofocus is absolutely fantastic. So if you plan on shooting in 4K, I would definitely suggest that you go with the Sony. For 1080p, I'm happy with the footage I get from both cameras at 24, 30, and 60 frames per second. But again, the Sony has the option for 120 frames per second, which gives it the edge. The A6100 also offers a video option called SNQ, which if you're not familiar with, allows you to select a frame rate ranging from one frame per second all the way up to 120 frames per second. Then the camera will either slow or speed up the footage to either 24, 30, or 60 frames per second. So what does that mean? It means that if you're using SNQ 120 and you watch the clip in the camera or on your computer, it's already slowed down versus shooting at 1080p at 120 frames per second, which you still need to slow down using a video editor. Next, let's talk about time-lapse. The A6100 offers interval shooting, which lets you have full control over your time-lapse. You can drag your shutter and get the results that you want. Now, once you're done shooting, you'll need to take the individual photos and compile a time-lapse video using software. The M50 comes with in-body 4K time-lapse, meaning that the camera will actually compile the time-lapse for you so that it's ready to be viewed. Now, this is where you're gonna to have to make a choice. The A6100 gives you much more control over your time-lapse and a higher resolution, but it means that you have to do work in post-production. The M50 does the work for you, but you're more limited in terms of exposure and resolution. I'm not gonna pick a winner here because different users are gonna have different preferences and you're gonna to need to pick what's gonna work best for you. An area where I will give the edge to the A6100 is that it has a clean HDMI output. So it's a great option when it comes to live streaming. The M50 does not have a clean HDMI output and the only way to use it for live streaming is either to use manual focus or to use special software. Now Canon did recently release the EOS webcam utility, which lets you stream with the M50 using a micro USB cable, but it's at a smaller resolution of 1024 by 576 and with more limited frame rate options. If you're interested in learning more about how to do that, I have a dedicated video, which I'll link to up in the corner and in the description. And this software is available for both Windows and Mac, and it's completely free. Now, another feature that I love about the A6100 is that there's no longer a 30 minute recording limit for video. This allows for continuous shooting of longer clips, and it removes the hassle of having to keep track of the length of the current clip so you don't accidentally reach the 30 minute limit and have the M50 automatically stop recording. So if you're using this for YouTube or you shoot long interviews, you're gonna love the fact that it can record continuously for much longer. All right, so now let's move on and talk about autofocus. And before we get to the numbers and specs, I'm gonna tell you that the autofocus on both of these cameras is absolutely fantastic. The A6100 has 425 phase and 425 contrast detection points, and they cover 84% of the sensor. The M50 uses Canon's amazing dual pixel autofocus system, and it has somewhere between 99 and 143 autofocus points, depending on which lens you use. For photography, the A6100 is faster and a bit more accurate, especially for continuous shooting. The eye autofocus has been good with the M50, but it's better with the A6100, especially when the subject is farther away from the camera. With both cameras, I absolutely love this feature when I shoot portraits, because I don't have to worry about getting the focus point exactly on the subject's eye, and I can just concentrate on framing. And by the way, if eyes are not detected, both cameras will revert back to face tracking. The A6100 also offers animal eye autofocus, which is really important to me because I take a lot of pictures of my dogs and traditional zone-based autofocus systems would focus on their nose because it's closer to the camera. For video, I've always been a fan of Canon's dual pixel autofocus system and the M50 doesn't disappoint. I'm completely confident that when the camera is facing me, my face is detected, it's being tracked and there'll be no hunting. Now the A6100 also has face detection, which works extremely well. And I didn't experience any type of hunting that I got from some older Sony models. And both cameras offer subject tracking, which is great and can be activated using the touchscreen. 
but the M50 has an easier to use and more accurate interface in my opinion. So to recap, the A6100 has more autofocus points which cover a larger portion of the sensor, animal eye autofocus, and a faster optimal autofocus time. On the other hand, the M50 has simpler to use autofocus modes and a better interface. All right, moving on, I wanna talk about lens options. And I think a lot of people forget to look at this part when they shop for a camera. When you buy a camera, you're actually buying into a lens system and there are two major considerations there in my opinion. First, what lenses are available and at what cost? And second, what happens when you wanna upgrade the body or when you have multiple bodies? So let's start with the first. The A6100 uses Sony's E-mount and the M50 uses Canon's EFM mount. As far as native lenses, there are a lot more lenses for Sony's E-mount than there are for Canon's EFM mount and at a higher quality. There are some good EFM lenses from Canon like the 32 mm f1.4, the 22 mm f2, but there are so many more options for Sony. Now, if we're adding third-party options, then Sigma just released three fast EFM primes, the 16, 30, and 56 mm f1.4, which really helps Canon. But of course, those lenses are also available for Sony. Now, a little bit of a sidebar here. I love these lenses from Sigma, and I created a dedicated video for them. I highly recommend that you check them out regardless of which of these cameras you end up getting. Now in the M50, you can get an adapter and then use any of Canon's EF and EFS mount lenses, which now opens up a ton of additional options, but you need another piece of gear with you. Now I wanna talk about the second consideration, which is upgrading or using multiple bodies. In the case of Sony, if you end up upgrading to one of their full frame bodies like the a7 III, then you'll be able to take the same lenses because both their APS-C and full frame bodies use the E-mount. If you buy APS-C lenses, you'll have to switch your full frame camera to Super 35 or APS-C mode. And if you buy full frame lenses, then of course you can use them on both cameras natively. The last thing to consider here is that you can't use any of Canon's new RF mount lenses on the M50. So if you own an EOS R or RP in addition to your M50, and you want to use full frame lenses so that you can use them on both cameras, you have to buy EF lenses and then use adapters with both cameras. Now, I really hope this section was helpful because I do think it's important to sometimes look beyond your immediate needs. It doesn't mean that this will apply to every person, but I like to share my real life considerations with you. Let's move on and talk a little bit about the screen. The A6100 has a three inch 922,000 dot LCD tilting flip screen so that we can flip it to face the front and see ourselves when we're in front of the camera without having to use an external monitor. It's not the most elegant implementation with like a multi-joint mechanism. And if you wanna know more about it, check out my detailed review, but it definitely does work. And the M50 has a fully articulating screen that can be tilted up, down to both sides, plus turn 180 degrees to face the front. It's also super helpful when you're shooting in portrait or in vertical orientation and the camera is above or below eye level because you can still get a perfect view of the screen. Now, if you take into account the different types of photography, using the camera on a slider or a gimbal, in my opinion, there is no question that the advantage here goes to the M50 in terms of screen positioning. But I do wanna mention that based on how they use the camera, some users do prefer the more compact design like the one on the A6100. Now, both companies refer to their screens as touchscreen, but the M50 has a full touchscreen while the A6100 only has a partial one. So on the M50, you can navigate the menus, select options and features from the screen, and touch or drag to focus. On the A6100, you can only use the touch functionality for focus, so again, I'm gonna give the edge to the M50. The next set of features that I wanna bring up have to do with audio. So both the A6100 and the M50 have an external mic input. So you can use an external microphone to get excellent audio right into the camera. One issue with the design of the A6100 is that you can't mount a microphone on the hot shoe if you plan on flipping the screen to face the front, and you'll need to use an L bracket or a cage. And by the way, this isn't a big deal for me because I end up using them on both cameras regardless. A big advantage of the A6100 is that the audio levels display is always available on the LCD when you're in movie mode. So as you're preparing to record, and even while you're recording, you can see the levels and you can also adjust them while recording. On the M50, you have to go into the menu to see and adjust levels before recording. 
you can't see them while you're recording, and you can't make adjustments without stopping the recording. So again, if you're shooting video, the A6100 wins here when it comes to audio options. If you wanna hear audio samples from the cameras using a built-in microphone as well as an external microphone, I'll link to the detailed review I did for each. All right, moving on, I also wanna talk about other features that these cameras have that may help you make a buying decision. And first, I wanna talk about image stabilization. So the A6100 does not have image stabilization, so you have to rely on lens-based OSS. The M50 doesn't have sensor shifting body image stabilization, but it does offer in-body digital image stabilization, which can work together with lens-based IS. I don't normally rely on it, and I would rather use Warp Stabilizer in Premiere Pro, but it is there for you if you want it, and it does make a difference. The next thing I wanna talk about is the apps. So the A6100 uses the Imaging Edge app, which is okay, but it has one big problem. You can control shooting mode, shutter speed, aperture, ISO, white balance, all that stuff for both photography and video. For stills, you can also control the self timer, continuous shooting settings, and there are some flash options. For video, you can adjust your frame rate, movie format, and you can start and stop recording. The biggest problem is that you can't see which autofocus mode is selected and you can't change modes. You also can't see where the focus point is or select a different focus point. So this makes the app almost useless for me when it comes to video, unless I'm only using it for framing and to start and stop the video. Now the Canon Camera Connect app gives you full functionality for both photography and video, which includes seeing and selecting focus modes and points. So I can see that my face is being tracked and I can select subjects for tracking. Both apps let you preview and transfer images and video to your mobile device, which is great, but I'm gonna give the edge to the M50 here because the focus feature on the app is critical for how I shoot. Okay, so as we get to the end of this battle of the budget cameras, which one is a better value and which one should you get? In order to make a decision, we need to discuss the cost. And like I said, at the time I'm making this video, the A6100 costs 598 bucks and the M50 costs $479. So that's about a $120 difference. Now, when I take into account multiple lenses, memory cards, camera support, a bag, and other accessories, that's not a huge difference. So I recommend that you pick the body that works best for you. The A6100 has advantages in many areas with better resolution and frame rate options, better 4K video quality, better ISO performance, faster burst shooting, more dials and custom buttons, better battery life, no recording limit, clean HDMI output for live streaming, and better audio options. The M50 has better JPEG color rendering in my opinion, can do in-body time-lapse, has a fully articulating real touchscreen, it's easier to use for beginners, offers digital image stabilization, uses a better app, and is less expensive. I always say that you can't have everything in any camera, so it comes down to what's important to you. I do my best to answer every question and comment, so if you have any questions, just drop them for me in the comment section. I'll put links in the description to where you can get both the A6100 and the M50, as well as some popular kits and accessories, and they're always holiday specials and discounts, and those links will automatically be updated with the lowest pricing. If you end up ordering anything using those links, you help support my channel for free and help me create more content for you, so thank you in advance. I also have links in the description to a more detailed video about each of these cameras if you want a more in-depth review. I really hope this video gave you a good comparison between the Sony a6100 and the Canon M50, and I'd love to hear in the comment section which option is best for you. If this video was helpful, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up, tweet it, share it with other people, and if you haven't yet, join the community by hitting the subscribe and notification buttons. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Tech Gear Talk. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.